So one thing that I want to talk about in the context of these conditional PMFs is a special property of the geometric random variable. It's called the memoryless property. So this is the memoryless property of the geometric random variable. So in a slangy way, this basically means that if I'm flipping a coin waiting to get ahead, that the coin doesn't remember what happened on the previous flips. Every new flip is just like a new day to this coin. Okay, so let's suppose that x is geometric random variable with parameter p, right? Where p is the probability of success. We know what the PMF of this uh, random variable is. It's like saying I fail k minus one times and then I succeed on the kth try. And so k could range from one to infinity, okay? So what I wanna ask is, what is the probability that I need more than j plus j zero flips given that I already needed more than j flips, okay? So I already failed j times What's the probability that I need to have at least J0 more flips to succeed, okay? Well, I can compute this from the PMF, and so let me just take a minute to derive that. So the probability that X is greater than J, well, the geometric PMF kind of looks like an infinite number of arrows with a very long tail where the arrows are decreasing. So I'm kind of asking, what is the sum of these arrows after some point J, okay? And I can just actually write down the sum of those arrows explicitly. This is the PMF. And let's just rewrite things so that instead of uh, summing from j plus 1 to infinity, I'm summing from 1 to infinity. That means I can take a factor of 1 minus p to the j out, and what I'm left with is summing from 1 to infinity. And then I say, well, look, this is actually just the sum of all of the values of the PMF, which I know has to be one, right? Because I have to have PMFs that sum to one. So now I've learned that this is my answer for how much is left in this tail. And so if I go back and ask, okay, well, let's go back to my question. What is the probability that X is greater than J plus J zero, given that X is greater than J? Well, conditional probability says this is the probability of both of these things happening. over the probability of the event. And now I know what the values of both these things are. So the top part is just um, one minus P to the J plus J zero. The bottom part is one minus P to the J. And now I can do some cancellation. I could say this is one minus P to the J zero. Why is this interesting? Well, this is actually very much, this, this is exactly the same as the probability of X being greater than J zero. And so this is the intuition. This is like saying, if I haven't succeeded in the first J trials, and I want to know what's the probability that it takes me J zero more trials to begin with, well, it's actually just the probability that I needed uh, J zero more trials from the very first place, right? So it's like the coin doesn't remember that I failed J times, and it's the same as if I started out entirely and just flipped it J zero times. So. This is only true for the geometric random variable. A kind of different way of looking at this graphically is kind of like saying, if I were to look at the geometric random variable, remember that a conditional PMF is kind of like saying, I've got this, I'm chopping it off here and I'm renormalizing it to just this area. Well, this area here has the same, you know, it's kind of self-similar, right? This looks the same as this. Whereas if you remember from our previous example where I motivated conditional probability in the first place, we used a binomial, right? And I said, okay, for the binomial, uh, what was the probability of, you know, something like this, where I said, now I told you I need, um, you know, I told you that the random variable was at least two. How does that change the PMF? The PMF changed to this thing, which definitely doesn't look binomial, right? This is not the same shape as it was before, whereas it's only true for the geometric PMF. So this is just something that you always see in the context of conditional probability. And so when someone asks you what random variable has the memoryless property, you know it's the geometric random variable.